So I see you have your eyes set on the AWS Certified SysOps Administrator Associate Certification, but you're not quite sure if you should take this exam, what's going to be on the exam, or what you'll need to do to earn this certification. By the time you finish watching this video, you'll have a clear plan on which steps you should take going forward. Now, if you're new here, I'm Greg, the creator of Thoughtful Techie Cloud, and each week I create a video to help you on your AWS cloud and tech journey. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe now. Now, this is a part of a series that I've done in the past called How Hard Is It? And I always like to start off with the exam landing page for SysOps Administrator Associate in this case. So this credential is gonna help the organization that you work for identify and develop the talent that is critical to implementing cloud initiatives. Specifically, the SysOps Administrator Associate Certification is going to validate your experience in deploying, managing, and operating workloads on AWS. But who should take this certification exam? SysOps Administrator Associate is going to be a great starting point for anybody with experience working as a system administrator, experience with AWS technology, strong on-premises, whether that's a data center or in a co-located facility, and an understanding of how that maps back to cloud. Any experience working on cloud initiatives is gonna be a huge plus. Here's what you're gonna learn at a high level. In preparing for this exam, you're going to gain experience deploying, managing, and operating workloads on AWS, as well as implementing security controls and compliance requirements. You're gonna gain familiarity with using both AWS Management Console and the AWS Command Line Interface, and you're gonna to need to understand the AWS World Architective Framework, along with AWS Networking and Security Services. And all you have to do to achieve this certification is pass the certification exam. Now, before I dive into the exam overview, I wanna talk about how the SysOps Administrator Associate Certification falls in line with the rest of the AWS certification hierarchy. So AWS certification fall in a, in a couple of different areas. The first is foundational certifications. So that's like the AWS Cloud Practitioner, which requires no technical experience. Then you have the associate level, which is where SysOps Administrator falls in line. In that associate level, you have the Solution Architect Associate, Developer Associate, as well as the SysOps Administrator Associate, which we're talking about today. And the newest member of the associate certifications is the Data Engineer Associate. Above the associate level is gonna be professional. This is where Solution Architect Professional sits, as well as the DevOps Engineer Professional. And if that's not enough AWS certifications for you, you can go even further and hit the specialty tier. This is something great for you to consider, not only as you plan for your SysOps Administrator Associate, but as you think about which other AWS certifications you wanna go after, depending on the type of cloud role and cloud career you wanna build. Now let's cover a little bit of the mechanics of the exam. The exam is gonna be 130 minutes. You're gonna have 65 questions that you'll need to answer, and I'll go a little bit deeper on how that breaks down. And right now it costs 150 US dollars to take this exam. You can either take this exam in a testing center or you can have it proctored online. Okay, are you still with me? Now we're about to jump into the SysOps Administrator exam guide. And don't worry, if you're wondering where I'm getting all this information from, I'm going to leave all the links to the resources that I'm reviewing here with you now in the description of the video. So I always like to say certification exam guides are like a map to the certification. Just like you wouldn't go on a road trip without either a GPS or a map if you haven't been there before, the exam guide really lays out what you need to prepare for and what to expect on the exam. Now I'm about to go deeper on the task that this exam is gonna validate. You're gonna to need to be familiar with support and maintaining AWS workloads according to the AWS World Architective Framework, as I mentioned earlier. I'm gonna to link to that in the description below. You're gonna to need to perform operations using the AWS Management and AWS CLI, implement security controls and compliance requirements, but we go on further and we need to focus on monitoring and logging and troubleshooting systems. Also, expanding on those networking concepts that I told you about, you'll need to be familiar with DNS, TCP IP, as well as firewalls. And from an implementation standpoint, you'll need to focus on architectural requirements that'll cover things like high availability, performance, and capacity. There'll also be a focus on performing business continuity and disaster recovery procedures. And the cherry on top, 
being able to identify, classify, and remediate incidents. Now, just as important as it is to know which task will be covered on the exam, it's also important to know what's gonna be out of scope on the exam. These are a few things that are listed in the exam guide. You don't need to design distributed architectures. You don't need to know about designing continuous integration and continuous delivery pipelines, that's CICD. You don't need to design hybrid or multi-VPC networking, that's outside of the scope. There's no software development that you need to know to pass this exam. And you don't need to define security, compliance, and governance requirements on this exam. Now, getting back to those 65 questions, there's some important things to note. There's two types of questions. There's multiple choice and there's multiple response. So multiple choice is gonna be having one correct response and three incorrect responses. The multiple response is going to have two or more correct answers out of five or more choices. And if it says pick the best two out of the five, you're gonna to have to pick two answers to get the answer right. 15 of the questions are unscored. But here's the thing, those 15 unscored questions, you're not gonna know which ones they are, so you gotta go and answer all of them as you navigate the exam. Now, what score do you gotta get on this thing to pass? The results for the exam are reported as a scaled score, and that ranges from 100 to 1,000. The minimum passing score here is 720. So if you can get 720 out of 1,000, you're good to go with that pass. Now I wanna spend some time going over something very important, and that's the domains that are gonna be tested on this exam. These are the content domains, and each domain has a certain weighting, which means out of the total questions that you can receive, the weighting of these domains determines how frequently you're gonna see questions based in that domain on the exam. Domain one is monitoring, logging, and remediation. That's worth 20% of scored content. Domain two is reliability and business continuity. That's worth 16% of scored content. Domain three, deployment, provisioning, and automation is 18% of scored content. Domain four, security and compliance, that's 16% worth of scored content. Domain five, networking and content delivery is worth 18% of scored content. And the final domain, domain six, cost and performance optimization is 12% of scored content. As you can see here, you need to know a whole lot about several domains. I highly, highly, highly recommend reviewing this exam guide from start to finish. That link is in the description because it covers all the tasks within those domains that you need to know in depth. And this is gonna help you focus on your study plan. And if you're still here, I've got a surprise for you. Practice questions. Practice questions are one of the best ways to answer two questions. If you're new to the SysOps Administrator, you can do practice questions to see where you are before the exam, to see if this is something you might be ready for now, or the other question practice exams help answer is after you have studied, where are you at now? Have you learned what it is you need to know to be able to schedule the real exam? I have a sample question set here. It's 10 questions. I'll link to it in the description. Try these out and let me know how you do. We've covered a lot of information in the video Please drop your comments below with any comments or questions you may have or feedback you would like to share for future videos. Don't forget to like, comment, and share, and I'll see you in the next video.